actually think this look of uh, Napoleon's hair cost? What is the price of this beautiful meteorite stone? How much would you pay for this incredible tuna? <laughs> no idea? Well, sometimes it's difficult to find a price for such specific goods, but there is a way to find out. An auction. One of the oldest forms of commerce, which according to historians took place already 500 years BC. And probably uh, the most bizarre story for the auctions happened when the entire Roman Empire has been sold to a single person who has been killed two months later. Uh, well, the word auction comes from a Latin word octus, which means increasing. And characteristic of an auction is that the price is determined during the process, so in a kind of a game, because surprisingly, auction theory is a part of a subject called game theory. Uh, you have several players, two bidders, and in the end, there is a winner, a classical game you can analyze. And uh, the game theory studies how to define rules and tries even to predict the behavior of the players. And this is what fascinates me, especially about auctions how rules can have an influence on your behavior. And I will show you today how rules of different auctions have another impact on your behavior and force you even to reveal something that you actually wanted to hide. And if you still doubt whether auctions theory is a serious topic, well, several Nobel Prizes in economics have been awarded for auction theories, for example, this, three gentlemen, and of course, William Vickery. Remember William Vickery, as we'll talk later on him again. Before we start, let me introduce the main concept of an auction. It's quite simple. So first, uh, we need to define the uh, term of a true value. This is a kind of limited price for every individual for a specific object. For example, uh, let's say this handkerchief. Uh, I love it so much. Uh, my true value of this handkerchief is 10 euro. I would pay very much for it. And you say, for example, well, I don't like the color, so you, your true value would be only two euros. So every individual has another true value on a particular object. And on the other hand, we have the price that you pay in an auction. So actually, uh, the amount of money that you want to spend. And obviously, the price that you pay should be lower than your true value, so that in the end, you can gain a surplus. Well, nowadays, Dozens of different auction formats exist. I will introduce the major four, the English, the Dutch, the first price and the second price auction. And let's start with the most famous one. You know this, the English auction. They uh, use it in this auction houses like Christie's where they sell paintings. This is an ascending auction, which starts with a very low price and is raised incrementally until no higher bids are received. So you try to overbid each other, and in the end, there comes the moment we all wait for the hammer when the object is sold. So, how to behave in this auction? Well, according to the theory in a perfect world, you should behave like this guy. <laughs> you just don't care about the prices and the behavior of the other players. You just bid until you reach your true value, your limit price, and then just quit. By the way, how much is the fish? <laughs> 3.1 million dollars. This must be like the greatest fish ever lived on the planet. And this is an example where the theory and reality contribute. Because uh, all the people quite happy. He puts a good face on the matter. The price was too high, as he confessed later in the interview. It was five times higher than his true value. And uh, this is what is called a winner's curse. When you uh, behave on the fact, when you get involved in this gambling atmosphere, you can't control yourself, and in the end, pay even more than you uh, wanted. So, it was the English auction. Want to know how it looks like in Texas? Let's have a look. <laughs> well, good luck. If you're a student work, this was just a joke, just to get me to the mood. Well, let's move to another uh, type of auction. Uh, let's imagine you want to sell hundreds of those fishes or thousands of flowers, and you can't wait until the bidding process is over, but still want to achieve a high price. Then you need a Dutch auction. 
It was invented in Holland in the 17th century when uh, selling tools. It is a descending auction which starts with a very high price that goes down, goes down, and the first one to raise his hand is the winner of the auction. The auction ends immediately when he plays his bid. So, how to behave here? Well, here you should behave like this guy. <laughs> Yeah, you should be very fast, exactly. You should be the fastest, actually, if you want to win. And this is at the same time, the big advantage of this auction is speed. You can use this for selling perishable goods like flowers or food. So, they have the English and the Dutch. And now let's go to the third one. Imagine you don't want to signalize your prizes to all the other winners. Then you need a first prize auction. Because this is a sealed auction where all the participants submit their bids simultaneously, secretly, for example, in an envelope. And the auction here chooses the, uh, the highest bid, the envelope with the highest bid, and this is the winner. He has to pay his price and uh, he gets the item. So, what is the behavior here? Well, here, you should behave like this guy. <laughs> then, in fact, a first class auction gives you a strong incentive to lie about your true value. Since you don't know the prices of the others, they can be very low. You don't want to risk of telling the true value to overpay, so therefore, you always underestimate. So remember, in a first class auction, you never reveal your true value. That was the theory. And now let's come to the practice. I want to play a real auction with you right now for real money. <laughs> and therefore I want to sell you something you can't buy so easily anywhere. Uh, this great <laughs> handkerchief. Look how beautiful it is. Look how smooth it is, right? And you can do everything with it. You can play with it with your cat. You can put it in your pocket. You can put it in your hand even. And this is where the story and, uh, starts, not hands. Once you hear the magical blow, the handkerchief disappears. But that's not all. It's still floating around the molecules here. One is here, one is here, and one is even here. And now you hear the magical blow, and the handkerchief appears. Maybe once again in your hand. Isn't that great? Do you want to know the secret behind this handkerchief? You can buy it right now in an auction. Take out your smartphones. Take out your smartphones and go to the Google form you have logged in before the talk. So, we will play a first price auction, a secret auction. You submit your bid uh, secretly. And my friend Gay will choose the winner and, and will announce it after the show. So, um, we will play for real money, please. This is real. You come up to the door, give me the money, and I tell you the secret how it works. <laughs> so please put in realistic prices that you're going to pay. Uh, and I want you first to fill in this field. So this is the price that you're going to pay for this secret energy. Please put in here. Uh, remember that the price that you pay should be lower, it should lie about your true value. Put in all the numbers and put a dot for decimal numbers. And now, I want to ask you to fill also this field as well. This value will not participate in an auction. This is just for me, for information, because I'm so curious and maybe for a little surprise at the end of the talk. Fill in here your true value. So, what is your limit price for this handkerchief trick? Please uh, fill in the numbers with a dot for decimal numbers. So, please send your answers now and hide your phones, we don't need them anymore. And uh, in the end, I will announce the winner. And now we move on to the last auction, the greatest auction of all, and the reason why I actually decided to give this talk, the second prize auction, also known as the Vickery auction, named after this uh, guy, gentleman, uh, who has been awarded a Nobel Prize for it. So at the first glance, it's quite, it's quite similar to the previous one. Everyone submits his bid simultaneously, secretly, in an envelope, for example. The auction agent chooses the highest bid, and this is the winner. But here comes the difference. 
the winner doesn't pay his price, he pays only the second highest price. Why that? Well, this small change in rules provokes a special behavioral effect. It makes bidders reveal their true values. A second price mechanism encourages everyone to bid truthfully. This is an auction where the price you want to pay equals the true value. And I will prove right now in a simple example why it makes no sense in this auction to lie about your true value. Let's imagine two players, Barney and Edna, and they are interested in this uh, beer. So these are the true values of them. So if they play a second price auction, Barney will be the winner, as he has the highest bid of 100, and he will pay only 70 because this is the second highest bid of Edna. So, now let's see if it, if it makes any sense for Barney to change his bid. Does it make sense to overestimate? What if he puts 150 instead of 100? Well, as you see, nothing changes. He is still the winner with the highest bid, and he still pays 70. But what if in this situation, Edna's true value would be 120? Well, in this case, Barney is still the winner, but now he has to pay 120 instead of 100. So actually, you want to avoid the situation where you overpay your true value. It is not a good strategy. And the other situation, does it make sense for him to underestimate? Well, in this case, nothing changes. Still, he's still the winner with the highest bid, he still pays 70. But what if Agnes has been put behind here? Barney loses the object, although he would like to pay even 100 for it. So underestimating is not a good strategy neither. The only good strategy, the dominant strategy, is to bid truthfully. That's why it's called an honest auction. In a second price auction, you never can influence the price that you pay. You have no influence on the second price, this is the price of another person. You only have influence on the probability of winning or losing the auction. And so it makes no sense of misrepresenting your value because in the end you will pay less anyway. And now you uh, wonder if it's such a quick mechanism, why don't we use this uh, everywhere? What we do here? eBay is, uses the so-called proxy bidding and uh, this is a mixture actually of the English auction and the second price auction. You will realize you never pay the price on eBay that you have bid. You always pay something below and this is exactly the second highest price plus some eBay fee. Do we have the results? So I will now announce the winner. I'm very curious, you look not so great. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you put the real prices on it, guys? <laughs> because the winner of uh, the auction is Oleg. Who is Oleg? O L E K. Here. May I tell the price that you're written on it? I might have messed it up. Sorry? I Okay, if you missed it up, then, then I will... So this next one is Jesus. <laughs> Where am I? Jesus, I'm here. So is this the price that you really want to pay? 20 euro 99, right? <laughs> Alright, thank you Adam, congratulations. For the Uh, and that now, you remember, I want to, uh, to ask you to fill in this uh, field. Now you guess why, since we have heard of a second price auction. If you would play a second price auction, hypothetically, you would put in these prices, this trailer. And now let's have a look if there would be any change in, uh, in the result. And in, in fact, Jesus stays the winner. But now, here comes the point, you would pay on the second highest price, that would be only 15. <laughs> so you see how a change in rules can influence uh, the outcome of an auction and can provoke you to tell 
the truth. And that's why I want to uh, finish my talk with my mother's advice. Never lie and always say the truth. Except you're playing the first price auction. <laughs> Thank you.